Writing is a key method of communication for most people, and it's one that many people struggle with. Writing and communication skills have degraded with more and more people communicating through email and text messaging. Developing writing skills is still important in the business world as creating proper documents, such as proposals, reports, and agendas, giving you the extra edge in the workplace. The Business Writing Workshop will give your participants a refresher on basic writing concepts such as spelling, grammar, and punctuation, and an overview of the most common business documents. These basic skills will provide your participants with the extra benefit in the business world that a lot of people are losing. Business Writing, Module 1, Getting Started Welcome to the Business Writing Workshop. Writing is a key method of communication for most people, and it's one that many people struggle with. This workshop will give participants a refresher on basic writing concepts such as spelling, grammar, and punctuation. It will also provide an overview of the most common business documents such as proposals, reports, and agendas. All of this will provide that extra edge in the workplace. Module 2 Working with Words The building blocks of any writing, whether for business or social purposes, are words. Failure to use words properly can affect the overall impact of your prose. In this module, we will discuss the spelling of words, grammar issues in writing, and how to prevent both by creating a cheat sheet. Spelling The use of correctly spelled words is important in all business writing because you are presenting a professional document. A misspelled word can reflect negatively on your image. It may also result in confusion and meaning. Here are some tips to improve spelling issues when writing. Number 1. Familiarize yourself with commonly misused words, particularly sets of words often mistaken for each other. Example, affect versus effect. Affect is to influence or change. Our income has been affected by the global recession. Effect is the impression result. It can also mean to cause. The global recession has a dramatic effect on our income. This problem also happens with pronouns or pronoun-linking verb contractions which sound alike. Examples, whose versus whose, their versus their, and your versus your. Number two, make sure you pronounce words properly. Colloquial pronunciations can cause people to omit certain letters in writing. Example, writing difference instead of difference, because one pronounces this word with a silent first E. Number three, note some friendly rules on spelling. Example, I before E except after C. Example, receive belief. Number four, if you're writing for an international audience, note that there are acceptable spelling variations in different kinds of English. For example, American and British English tend to have many differences in the spelling of the same words. Notable are the use of O-U instead of O, as in color versus color, R-E instead of E-R, as in center versus center, I-S-E instead of I-Z-E, as in realize versus realize. Number five, lastly, use spelling resources. These days, spell checking is as easy as running a spell check command on your word processing software. If you're still uncertain after an electronic spell check, consult a dictionary. Grammar. Here are two grammar issues most business writers have trouble with. Note, all grammatical rules discussed here have exceptions and complex forms. Number one, subject-verb agreement. Singular subjects go with singular verbs, and plural subjects go with plural verbs. The singular form of most subjects contain the suffix s or es. The opposite is true for verbs. It's the singular verbs that end with s. Note, though, that some subjects have unusual plural forms. Example, medium, media, man, men, etc. Number 2. Verb Tenses Modern English has six tenses, each of which has a corresponding continuous tense. The first three, present, past, and future, are less problematic. The other three tenses, perfect, past perfect, and future perfect, are formed with the helping verbs have, has, and had. Perfect tense is used to express an event that happened in the past, but still has an effect on the present. Example, Mr. Michael Johnson has managed this company for the past five years. Past perfect tense is used to express an event that took place before another action, also in the past. Example, Mr. Myers had been sitting on a meeting when the client called. Future perfect tense is used to express an event that will have taken place at some time in the future. Example, I will have finished by 10 p.m. In business writing, there are standard tenses used depending on the type of document you are writing. 
business cases to be discussed in a later module may be written in past or future tense depending on whether the purpose is to discuss how a project was executed or propose how it would be executed. Verb tenses can also vary within the same business document. The organization overview section of a proposal may be written in perfect tense, while the financial projection section written in present tense. Creating a cheat sheet The number of spelling and grammar rules can feel daunting, but you don't have to memorize everything. What you can do is create a cheat sheet. A cheat sheet is a ready reference of rules you need to remember written in a brief, simple, and easy to understand fashion. Tables and bullet points can make a cheat sheet more effective. Some cheat sheets are poems, alliterations, and songs. For best results, make your cheat sheets personalized, targeted to spelling and grammar issues that you often have problems with. Jacob was preparing to write an important paper for one of his partners. He worked hard on it, and after he was done, he asked his colleague to review the text after he had run spell check. Upon close inspection, the colleague found some errors and discussed them with Jacob. One was spelling. Although Spellcheck caught most of the errors, it missed many that had to do with context, such as its and its. Some of his sentences had verb tense errors and such that were not picked up by Spellcheck. After he had checked the document over well, the colleague made some cheat sheets for Jacob to help him remember the rules he neglected to address. Jacob was able to improve after that. Module 3 Constructing Sentences now that we have a basic understanding of how to use words more effectively in business writing, it's time to look at sentences. This module will discuss the parts of a sentence, its proper punctuation, and the four kinds of sentences. Parts of a sentence A complete sentence has two parts, a subject and a predicate. The subject is what the sentence is about. It is usually a noun or pronoun. The predicate tells something about the subject. It is often indicated by an action verb or a linking verb. Example, the committee recommends a full inquiry over this matter. The subject is the committee, and the predicate is recommends a full inquiry over this matter. Subjects and predicates can be simple and complex, so length does not determine what a subject and a predicate is. Complete sentences are advisable in business writing. Aside from subscribing to the more formal format typical in most business documents, complete sentences are what makes sense. Punctuation Punctuations are standard marks in writing used to separate words, clauses, and sentences. The use of punctuations can affect a text's readability, flow, and even meaning. Commonly used punctuations include period, used to end a sentence indicating a full stop. Periods are also used after initials and abbreviations. Question mark, used after a question. Exclamation point, used after statements expressed with strong emotion. Comma, used to separate items in a series. Also used before and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet, when they join independent clauses, unless the clauses are short. It is also used to separate items that interrupt a series. Colon, used to mean, note that follows, and is typically succeeded by an elaboration, summation, interpretation of what it precedes. Apostrophe used to show belonging or to indicate the omission of letters in a word. Semicolon, used to link independent clauses not joined by a coordinating conjunction. As a rule, use a semicolon to end complete sentences in cases where you're not indicating a full stop. Types of sentences Four kinds of sentences. Number one, declarative. The most commonly used sentence type in business writing, these are sentences that make a statement. They end with a period. Example, we are writing to inform you that your account would be expiring in 10 days. Number two, interrogative. These are sentences that ask a question. They end in a question mark. Interrogative questions don't necessarily follow the format of subject plus predicate. Example, would you be format renewing your account this year? Number three, imperative. These are sentences that give a command or make a request. They usually end with a period, though sometimes they can end with an exclamation point although to do so is not recommended in business writing. Imperative sentences are advisable when you're making a to-do list, creating an agenda, or are outlining an instruction manual. Example, please inform Joseph that we would be expecting his payment on Monday. Number four, exclamatory. These are sentences that express strong feeling. They usually end with an exclamation mark. Example, congratulations for getting promoted to vice president. 
Carter was trying to write a letter to a colleague expressing his gratitude for a job well done, but couldn't find the words to express himself. He knew what he wanted to say, but his sentences didn't seem to flow correctly. He decided to break down his sentences into simpler parts so he could determine what was the matter. When he did that, he found he could make them more interesting and smooth by adding punctuation. His sentences could even cause the reader to use inflections in their own voice when reading. Now he has a top-notch letter that his colleague is sure to love. Module 4 Creating Paragraphs Carefully written words and well-constructed sentences make up the building blocks of writing. Now it's time to discuss how you can put these blocks together for best results. In this module, we will discuss the basic parts of paragraphs and some tips on organizing your paragraphs. The Basic Parts The three basic parts of a paragraph. Number one, topic sentence. The topic sentence is the first sentence in a paragraph. It introduces the main idea of the entire paragraph. It is also called the controlling sentence because it gives the writer direction on where the discussion within that paragraph should go. Number two, supporting sentences. Supporting sentences expand your topic sentence. They comprise the main body of your paragraph. There can be more than one supporting sentence in a paragraph and they should be arranged in the best logical order. Number three, closing sentence. The closing sentence is the last sentence in a paragraph. It reminds the reader what the paragraph is all about, often by restarting the main idea behind the entire discussion or offering a conclusion. The closing sentence is like a clincher statement. Understanding the three basic parts of a paragraph ensures that your writing is clear and focused. Note that not all paragraphs have to contain these three basic parts, but these parts serve as a good guideline in creating cohesive paragraphs. Organization Methods The following are some tips in organizing your paragraphs. Keep your main idea central. Before you begin writing any business document, you have a central idea that you wish to impart. If you're writing a proposal, for example, your main idea might be that this solution is what would solve the problem most satisfactorily. Keep this idea in mind and weed out information that does not support your main idea. Decide how to best explain your main idea. Once you have a main idea, decide what facts or topics best support your idea. Present them in logical order. Whenever possible, outline first before starting on any writing. It will give you an idea of how the topic will play out. Karen needed a detailed and thorough paper on the current business plan. She needed to organize her paragraphs so that she could better express the ideas in her writing. She started by making an outline on her paper. This allowed her to see a sort of map of her ideas so that she could have them organized as a whole. Then, she made each paragraph make more sense and added to their readability by organizing the sentences into the topic sentence, the supporting sentences, and the closing sentences. When she stepped back and took a look at her work, it was exactly as she wanted it. Module 5 Writing Meeting Agendas Time is a precious commodity in business. You cannot afford to have discussions go all over the place. This is why agendas are an integral part in keeping meetings focused, organized, and flowing well. In this module, we will discuss the basic structure of agendas, how to select an agenda format, and tips and techniques when writing an agenda. The Basic Structure An agenda is a list of the topics for discussion in a meeting, alongside with details that can help the meeting run successfully. It keeps the discussion on track and the meeting within schedule. When included in the invitation, an agenda is a way to brief participants on how they should prepare for the meeting and what they should bring. The basic structure of an agenda includes date, time, location, and estimated duration of the meeting, purpose of the meeting, advanced preparation guidelines. List down what invitees need to review or think about before the meeting so that the discussion can be more targeted and productive. This is also the section to advise attendees what they need to bring to the meeting. Example, please have a copy of the 2005 financial report with you. List of invited or confirmed attendees. Items for discussion. It is recommended that you state items for discussion using results-oriented action words. Example, decide on which vendor to award Sunrise Account to is a better agenda item than Sunrise Account or Talk About Sunrise Bidders. Person in charge for each item. Approximate time to be spent on each item. The basic structure continued. Below is a sample template for a meeting agenda. Choosing a format. There are many different formats of a meeting agenda, although very few stray from the basic structure discussed earlier. 
Word processing software like Microsoft Word offers agenda templates and agenda wizards for you to use. The agenda format to use depends on when the attendees are going to view the agenda. Most agendas are distributed days before the meeting, which is recommended. There are cases, however, when an emergency meeting has to be called and the agenda is sent on the meeting day or hour itself. If it's the latter case, write the agenda in outline form, the way it can be easily reviewed in the shortest time. The context of the meeting. Some meetings happen regularly, for example, a monthly board of directors meeting. In this case, sections on matters resolved the previous meeting or matters arising from the previous meeting may be appropriate for the meetings to have a good flow. Agendas from meetings that happen regularly may not be as detailed as other agendas, as there is the presumption that regular attendees can easily make out what basic outlines and basic tags mean. The attendee's level of familiarity with the items in the agenda can also dictate how detailed and how formal an agenda should be. The purpose of the agenda. Your purpose in sending out an agenda can influence what format you should use. Some agendas are meant as an invitation to potential meeting attendees. In this case, you can include sections on how you perceive their input on the discussion would help. Some agendas are meant as orientations. For example, the Toastmasters Club issues agendas to inform their invitees what would happen in an event. They write the agenda in the second person. Example, this is the section where you discuss what happened in the last symposium. Writing the agenda. When writing the agenda, consider the following factors. Priority of items. Consult everyone involved in the meeting what topics should be included in the agenda. At least, seek confirmation from your team if the agenda is accurate and complete. Rank the topics in descending order of importance and urgency. This way, it's the less priority topics that get sacrificed in case there's no more time. Logical flow. Start with topics arising from the previous meeting before new stuff, unless new issues are more important. Combine items that are related and or similar. Start with informational items first, before items that require critical thinking and decision-making. A lot time for questions. Close with a wrap-up session. Timing. Plan for only 30 minutes to 1 hour and 30 minutes. Anything longer tends to be unproductive because of attendees' fatigue. Be reasonable in setting the time that will be spent on each topic. If the discussion has to be really focused, state in the agenda what precisely would be discussed. You may also advise attendees what they need to prepare beforehand to get the discussion flowing faster. Jenny was preparing for an upcoming meeting, and so she decided to create an agenda. She wanted to include details about what the meeting was for, what the attendees might need to bring, and when the meeting should end. She made sure to keep her thoughts logical and brief, but also actionable, so that they would contribute to the flow of the meeting rather than clutter it with unnecessary ideas or suggestions. She also made sure to give enough time for each subject to be discussed thoroughly so that her approximation of the end time of the meeting would be more accurate. When the meeting came to pass, it ran smoothly, all because she made sure everyone was prepared. Module 6, Writing Emails Email is a convenient and effective medium to conduct business communication. In this module, we will discuss etiquette guidelines on how to address an email message, as well as grammar and acronyms rules in the letter body. Addressing Your Message When addressing an email, it's important to know the difference among the two, CC, and BCC fields. Using the To field The To field is used when sending a direct message to someone. You may send the same email to multiple addresses using the to field. Do so when your email is meant to be addressed directly to all recipients, as in the case of a manager directing his team. Note, though, that when you use the to field, all email addresses can be viewed by all recipients. Put multiple addresses in the to field only when every recipient is okay with his or her email address being released to everyone. Using the CC field CC stands for Carbon Copy. You use the CC field to send a copy of the email message to people who are not meant to be the direct recipients of the message, but still need to be kept on the loop. For instance, if a manager has ordered a secretary to send a memo to everyone in the department, the secretary may place all the department employees' email address in the To section and the manager's email address on the CC field. Note that, like the To field, all email addresses entered in a CC field can be viewed by everyone. Using the BCC field. BCC stands for a blind carbon copy. 
When you place email addresses in the BCC field, recipients are blind to other recipients' email addresses. The use of the BCC field is most appropriate if the recipients have not given permission for their email address to be released or if there is reason to keep the email address private. Because the BCC field offers privacy that the to and CC fields do not, you may use the blind carbon copy field for both direct and indirect email messages, where privacy of email addresses is needed. If you wish to send an email to many direct recipients, but you don't wish to disclose anyone's email address, just use your own email address in the to field and use the BCC field for the recipient's addresses. Grammar and Acronyms while online mediums of communication have developed its own vocabulary, it's best to remember that business emails have the same formality as any business letter. Here are some key things to remember with regards to grammar and the use of acronyms in an email. Always follow the rules of good grammar. You may refer to English writing style guides for these rules. Always use full sentences and words with proper sentence structure. Don't use text speak. Example, use the reports are due on Monday instead of D reports are due mon. Proper capitalization and punctuation are a must. In email, all caps give the impression that you're shouting and small caps are hard to read. Example use the report should include an evaluation report instead of the report should include an evaluation report all capitalized. In business emails, avoid text speak abbreviations such as BTW for by the way, IMHO in my honest opinion, and LOL laugh out loud. Victoria wanted to write two emails. One would be given to her partner and would be read by everyone on their team. The other email would be sent to everyone in the department, but the information was only relevant to certain members. However, everyone needed to stay up to date. The first she used the to field on. This ensured it would go to everyone and everyone would know it was meant for them. The second was given to everyone, but only the partner needed the information. Everyone else received the email so they could stay informed and up to date on the current project and its progress. 